All right, guys. Hey, we're going to go ahead and get her started. Um, I know you usually wait until five after, but four after is going to work. Three after is going to work for me because I'm a high D, right? And today I'm trending very well. I've got my Johnny impression on. And then I also have my Chris <laughs> uh, impression. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is where it's at. Okay. Um, so, hey, I'm not going to talk very much at all. I'm going to jump right into it, give it over to Johnny, give it over to Ryan. Um, we are looking at a great time in real estate. Uh, this is an awesome time in real estate right now. If you haven't noticed, there are less people doing your job, which means that you're, and that's been a, a trend, I think is going to grow. So last year at this time, there were 458,000 real estate agents in California, including brokers. Now there's only 435. That's down 5% in 12 months. There's a pretty good chance that the person, even within this room, I hate to say it, that the person to your left or your right might be looking for other work. So maybe not in this room. If you guys are here, that means that you're plugged in. Um, Johnny, did you want to say something before I introduce Ryan? Yes, yes, yes. I just want to say, Ryan, sorry I couldn't be there in person. We're down here in... Um... Cancun. I brought the our the real estate team over here and um, some of the top producers, and we're at this all inclusive resort. The only thing that I wanted to say, I'm going to pull a Brent right now. We're up here at this resort in Cancun. So there are agents that are leaving the business, and there's agents that are getting to experience Cancun. success in the business, <laughs> right? So if you're if you're if you're not experiencing success, reach out to Brent, reach out to myself, reach out to Barry, reach out to somebody that you know is doing a decent job and is making a living and doing this full time because there's no reason to struggle. Do not do not suffer in silence. And the only other thing that I wanted to touch on is that coming up November 17th at PCAR, does not matter what brokerage you're with. This is a business planning clinic. It's happening in person, live at PCAR November 17th. We're having a agent fly in. From out of state, Stacey Peterson, she's, she went from closing zero transactions to 300 transactions in five years. Is this not somebody that you think would be good? Raise your hand, raise your hand, give a thumbs up if you think this is somebody that would be a good agent to learn from right now, right? So this November 17th, don't miss it. It's free. The price is incredible. The knowledge you're going to walk away with is going to be able to feed your families through this coming winter season if you choose to look at it that way. But with that, I don't want to eat up too much of Ryan's time because he's the rock star. He's the local legend, and he has a lot of information that he needs to impart in a very short period of time. So with that, have a great time, all. We'll see when we get back. Ryan, it's up to you. All right, guys. If you don't know who Ryan Winquist is, then you need to definitely get on that website. Check it out. If you don't have a pen and a piece of paper in your hand right now, you better have a phone out so you're clicking your thumbs, right? Or raise your hand, we'll throw one at you. Yeah, there you go. Um, Ryan and I share one thing in common that a lot of people don't know about. He is a twin, and I was also a twin. And so that is about the extent of it. So I'm gonna sit down <laughs> and try to... <laughs> I just wish I could be as stylish as you. Yeah, there you go. So, um, if you tuck that one side out, I think that's all it takes. Uh, Ryan, is your phone number 916 595 375? Yes. And I found it through a Google search. Okay. Sweet. Google student's job then. Awesome. Ryan, do you know our peak? So, yeah. So, um, <laughs> this is the market that we were in where everything was frozen. Uh, <laughs> and I think what's happening right now is that we have some people who are holding on to this. I was looking at an Instagram story yesterday, and some agents are like, you know, the market's just stabilizing. And I think that's completely false. Sorry. Okay. I'm not here to give a beat down or, you know, or to make you feel discouraged. I want to give the straight dope. I want you to walk away with a sense of what the market's doing, tips to talk with clients, and maybe how to position your business in, in the coming time. Okay? Um, and so we're taking off these glasses, and then we're looking. We're not putting on you know, black doom ones, but um, we're going to look at what the market is actually doing. So um, interrupt me. You know, they give me an hour to talk. Um, there's a ton of stuff. I want you to get something out of this. Can we dim the lights so we can see the screen a little bit? Too? Yeah. But let's got cold. So basically what we're seeing right now, and my clicker is not working. Oh, sorry. Not working. I think you gotta aim it at no. no, yeah, yeah, I think uh, there's an issue on this end, so we will figure that out. Hopefully, it will be the only time. Okay, 
Um, it's really, really slow. Um, it's not so. housing market is doing right now. Mortgage rates crept up last year and it's totally changed the market. Do you remember last year when early in the year when everyone was saying, hey, nothing will ever change this market? <laughs> Mortgage rates were like, hold my beer and <laughs> we have a totally different dynamic. But it's really it's not just rates, it's the Fed. I don't know if you've noticed, but the Fed has been raising the federal funds rate. And what they're trying to do is curb inflation. And so we have this dynamic in the economy right now where they're trying to slow down spending. And spending, and really the housing market is a sacrificial lamb on the altar. And they've been really clear. Here was Jerome Paul in September. Uh, Jerome uh, Powell, the Fed chair, he's you know talked about a, a reset or you know supply and demand need to get better aligned, go through a correction, you know more balance. And then yesterday they had a meeting and he said at some point it will be appropriate to slow the rate of increases. Not yet. Ultimately, level of interest rates will be higher than previously. The highest, the housing market needs to get back into a balance between supply and demand. So you hear the Fed saying. We need the market to correct, and my advice is believe them, okay? <laughs> because that's what they're trying to cause. Um, now, the good news, Chuck Norris can handle 7% rates. He eats them for breakfast like nothing. Okay? <laughs> um, the unfortunate news is that everyone else is a mere mortal and not Chuck Norris, okay? And so here's where the struggle is. I know um, when I hear people say, but in 1982, I bought my house for 16%, you know, that's great. But you also paid fifty nine thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> you know, plug in your current value with seven percent, and can you afford your own house? I'm guessing the answer might not be yes. Okay, um, but here's what we've seen. Um, and sorry, you can't see the top. Um, that's not my deal. But we've increased from three percent to seven percent over time in a very short period of time. Okay, it was an incredible spike. This is the fastest rate change we've seen since the early '80s. And so you know what we're seeing? It's also fast change in the stats and change in prices, okay? Up here I said the temperature of the market can change by the week though, okay? By the way, I'll give a PDF of this to everyone or whoever wants one at the end. I'll email the organizer and they can get that to you or you email me. But what would happen if, if rates went down to 5% tomorrow? Well, rates are high. Some buyers come back. Some buyers are free, they're, they're just gonna sit, but buyers would come back. What, happened, what would happen if rates went to 8% tomorrow? Okay. So we see this supply-demand relationship, and really demand. Um, but here's a prophecy into the future. These are mortgage purchase applications. And you can see this line on the very end, they've just you know, fallen off a cliff, where nationally purchase applications are down about 40, 42% not from last year. So that's a clue into there's fewer buyers. And this is what you want to talk to your sellers about, about that there's a smaller pool of buyers who are participating. So that means you need to Price it right, price it lower, 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 which we'll get to, okay? Um, and we can totally switch clickers if yours has some magic sauce, that's no problem. <laughs> okay, so here's kind of a picture of the market. The sellers are stuck in the past and buyers are stuck in the future, right? Wouldn't you say that's perfect? The sellers are like, in the past, prices are hot and sexy, then buyers are like, I don't want to pay way less because prices are declining, okay? So here's the truth. There's pain in heck, okay? This is the most hey, honest thing that we can talk we, about. Or is our mic on? Zoom is saying that they can't hear it. Yeah. And they can't hear him at all, or they can't hear him loudly? Well, let me... Okay, right. you guys figure that yeah, out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Keep, Keep going. On. So, okay, now let's make this yeah. the last tech issue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the market will figure it out, though, and lastly, the market hasn't stopped. Okay, yesterday on Twitter, someone was saying if the housing market was going 110 miles per hour. What speed is it right now? And someone said it's a parked car. And I'm like, okay, that's cute, but I totally disagree with the analogy because. The market is moving forward. We're not seeing as many deals. It hasn't stopped, literally. All right. So here's the perfect tweet, though, in my mind. Do you guys know Erin Stump? She's uh, the president over at SAR. She's awesome, but she says, there are many motivations that compel people to buy um, homes in any market. Currently, I have buyers that are 
wanting a yard for a dog, relocating for work, relocating for family, getting married, getting divorced, moving out of parents' house, over apartment life. And I like that she, what she's focusing on, her narrative, is that who are the people that are buying? Now, this is going to look different. You know, people doing a 1031 exchange or buying an investment property or doing an Airbnb or cashing out with, if you feel like it's the top and, you know, deploying equity, people who are going to Idaho from California. Whatever the story is, it's time to talk about lifestyle buyers because you know what you don't have right now? Prices are up and it is awesome because that market and that shit has scaled, right? Um, but you can look even last last week, and is there a way? I don't know if sounds super animal just to get rid of that stuff. Um, Possible? It's just right it's 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 I'm not anal, but it's just, I just want to see it. Oh. Okay, so this, this came out from LinkedIn. These are LinkedIn members who relocated from San Francisco, and they changed their LinkedIn membership to different places. And you can see Sacramento, um, a, a small number of people, but this is literally last month, and I just want to say that migration hasn't stopped. Okay, we're not going to have the great 2020 migration this year, but people are still moving. Okay. Um, by the way, moving from California, sometimes you can use autofill to tell a compelling story on social media, right? Or um, regret moving, right? Mm. I think sometimes <laughs> take a screenshot and like there's some interesting stuff there. Okay, interesting ideas. Um, this right here are people last year who moved out of state. Moved out of state. Okay. Expect for more of that. I, I, um, I, w I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think that the number is going to be greater than that. But um, you know, last year you had people also. Okay, uh, Roseville, their population increased by 2,240 people. And so you ask yourself in this market, now these are old stats by now, but where are people moving? Where are they spending their time? Um, what's motivating them to move? Okay. Um, and one interesting thing, this is um, put out by the Gregory Group. This isn't my graph, but here's a cool visual. You can see in Roseville that 22.1% of regional sales for new construction has been Roseville this year. Isn't that amazing? One out of five properties. Did you know for four months in a row, Placer County has had more newly constructed sales than Sacramento County? It's amazing because Sacramento County is so much larger, it's number one on the list always, but the market shifts, and where are people buying? Roseville, Suburbs. Placer County. And so, look, sales are still way down from where they were. There's no mistaking, it's just they're down in other places more than Roseville, okay? Um, and you can see the high, um, Roseville also has the most unsold inventory for new construction, so let's not paint a totally rosy narrative, but, but you can see, ask yourself, where are people moving, where do they want to be, um, you know, and like Mike Bilby says, I love his statement, you know, if you think that the market's going down, where do you want to write it down, you know, I think that's an awesome question, okay, so since September in Placer County, what do you notice, um, this is the breakdown, September and October, 22% cash, FHA 4%, VA 3%, uh, conventional 66%. Um, and you also, do we actually need that comment? I'm trying to get it out. Okay, okay cool. Thank you. Because um, I was like, I love you guys, but I'm not sure you can see it. But, um, and then when, when we look at Sacramento County, we can see it basically we have, okay, Placer, very little FHA, right? Uh, are you guys with me? I feel like there's yeah. so many distractions here. So, um, are you guys with me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, very little FHA in Placer County, right? Um, you can look a lot more cash than uh, the rest of the market, but if you're Sacramento, and you can see too much background talk. There's no one talking. Okay. Let's officially switch clickers. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. You're just going to have to manage it. I feel it. I feel it. There we go. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. versus Sacramento. 
There's yeah. less cash and there's more FHA, right? Sacramento, lower price point. And so you think about who are the buyers? These are over the last two months, what type of financing are they, are they using? That's gonna be a clue into where to focus your business, okay? FHA is starting to grow a little bit. Um, cash has sort of been around the same level, okay? But conventional, a little bit less conventional, a little bit more FHA. Here's FHA in Sacramento County. Um, it was 11.7% uh, between September and November 2nd last year. The same time period, it's a little bit higher percentage, okay? FHA right now, what do they have though? A little bit better of a rate, okay? So these are first time buyers, but in a lot of cases, people might want to use FHA if the rate's gonna be better, okay? Here's the really good news, and this is what you wanna share, I think, with your buyers especially, but also your sellers. Concessions have been on the rise. This is Sac County, our most populous county, and about 44% of sales of transactions in October had a credit back for repairs or a credit for closing costs maybe a credit for buying down the rate. And so I think we're gonna get at least to one out of every two, but that's good news. There is hope for your buyers. If you get into today's market, the message becomes, there's a high likelihood that you are going to get the credit back of some sort, okay? And it's good news that sellers are hopefully starting to listen a little bit more, okay? Look at the pandemic though, these like disappeared. They nosedive down and we're getting back where we should be, okay? I'd like a price reduction and credit for closing costs. That's kind of where buyers at. Would you agree? Yep. yep. Absolutely. I think some people are stuck in this positive only narrative. They're like, we're going to keep the price high and we're going to buy down the rate. That's a really nice seller oriented narrative that doesn't sit so well in a buyer's market. Today, it is a buyer's market. Do you guys agree? Okay. There's some big data companies that say their little, you know, um, you know, measure it says a seller's market. It's absolutely not. Okay. Um, so. Home size, what has been happening in a home size in the region? Check this out, this is from 2012 onward, and this is the median size in red, it looks like an EKG, and then here's huh. uh, the average size in blue. Do you see what happened in 2020 and 2021, half of it? There was this huge spike. Why did home size increase? Does anyone know? Working from home. Working from home, okay. Yeah. But so, what? why are people <coughs> buying bigger homes? <laughs> Kids, okay. Housing, okay. housing crisis. Housing crisis. All these things. Um, well, the get more bang for the buck compared to San Francisco okay. Bay Area. Absolutely. So there's more migration, and really, what it is, it not so much that people want to quarantine in style. I'm sure some of the people were like that. The focus on a higher price point, okay, and more focus on Placer and El Dorado, um, larger homes in Placer. It helped um, boost the size. But what do you notice happened after this period? Do you see what's, what's gone on? We've seen this spike subside. And so buyers are no longer like migrating like that or targeting these larger homes. And so keep that in mind. Now here's a different way to look at it. 1998 onward, okay? Here's median in red and average in blue. Do you see what happened? Home size over time has increased. Here was the Great Recession. What happened to home size, the size of homes selling during the Great Recession? They went down. down. What does that tell us? It tells us that there are probably a lot more foreclosures of first time buyer homes, smaller homes, but also what can wealthy people do sometimes when there's tough economic times? Downsize. They, okay, they can downsize, that's part of it, absolutely. Buy more property. Buy more property. Okay, they can buy more property, but yeah, buy, buy rentals, but they can weather the storm also. And so if you don't have to sell, then you're in a position of advantage. And so what I would look for in, in a market that's changing is do we start to see more first-time buyer price ranges blow up? I don't think we're seeing that yet, which I'll show you. But right now you can see, look, it's starting to go down, but this was that pandemic sizzle, and we're kind of where we should be right now. And so I'll be monitoring this every single month, okay? Um, so some buyers are feeling hopeful, though, okay? Not everyone is feeling doomed. Okay, um, if, for instance, here's an email I got this week, um, a few days ago, it said, I really enjoy reading your blog, thanks for sharing your knowledge. As an eventual buyer, these trends are encouraging. And he wrote it after reading a post about prices declining, okay? And so prices are the holy grail for sellers, and, and I think some people, like I said, are fishing for like, what do I say about the market? Because I, I can't say the prices are up anymore, but you know what buyers wanna hear? You're gonna get a better deal, okay? The problem right now, Rates are so high and prices have come down, it hasn't made any difference with affordability yet. At some point, if prices keep going down, then we'll hit an inflection. We're just not there yet, okay? 
Uh, but here's Sacramento County, here's volume. Check it out, in, in the month of June, 2022, compared to all other years, what do you notice about 2022 in June? Oh, it's basically the lowest one besides 2007, right? Okay, are you tracking with me? What do you notice about July, 2022? Basically the same trend, right? Are you tracking with me? Uh, August, are we getting it? Yeah, yeah, we're good, okay. Uh, September, okay, and then October, whoa, October. Okay, October in orange, definitely like, this was a bad October, and so, um, so not a surprise, but we're in a market where we're seeing demand sinking, and this is showing up. Now, let me show you Placer County. Placer's a little different. You look at Placer, and you're like, okay, it was lower, but man, it's way above these previous years. And so the takeaway is, like, oh, Placer is awesome. But here's the thing. Don't, before you post that on Facebook, Placer has grown exponentially this decade, so it's a really bad comparison to compare the previous decade. What I would do in Placer is say it was the lowest October since, you know, in the past decade. That's the real trend, okay? Um, but here, here's, you know, speaking of trends, when you look at volume, May to October, okay, in Sacramento County, volume's down by 29%, in the region, about 28%, in Placer County, about 25%. So we've seen that many fewer sales. Okay, here's a different way to look at it, though. In the region, we've seen about 4,400 fewer sales over this six-month period, okay? I said it wasn't going to be a beat down. I'm sorry if it feels that way, but um, but here's the positive news. Okay, um, we've seen about 11,500 sales that have happened, and there's about 4,400 that haven't. And so there's a mindset thing here where I think you have to focus on the market that actually exists that's occurring, and keep your eye on how the other stat is changing. Okay. So it's basically like 28% of the market has been missing, and then 72% has happened since May. But here's the thing. Let me show you, if we look at just September to November, basically the past 60 days, what do you notice that the percentages in the region? We're down about 36%, okay? Or uh, Placer, you know, fewer sales. I mean, everything's basically down 30 plus percent. Look at Sacramento County, the most sales, <coughs> down 40% almost. And so, what we want to do, we got to be really careful that we're not hiding behind like May through October because the closer we get to today, the market sort of gotten worse, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so bye Zillow. Um, can we take a moment of silence? All those companies. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I know I know it's been really tough for you guys to uh, have Zillow exit the market. So um, it was a crescendo of iBuyer buyer activity that they sold their last home to open door. So. Um, but here's kind of what they look like. In, in the region, iBuyer's own 274 properties, and here's a breakdown of what they have. And really, this model is about 5% of the entire market, okay? And do you know what's happened since May? They've really, really felt it. And what they're doing right now, they're slowing down their acquisitions. They're not buying as much because they're trying to regroup and pivot, uh, just like everyone else in this room, right? How do I pivot in today's market? Uh, Open Door typically owns about 300 to 330 properties, and this number has just kept going down, and it just shows that they're, they, they are regrouping, okay? Um, okay, so my expectations for fall. Here's a fewer new listings during the fall. All the metrics are gonna soften. Faster escrows, okay? People aren't busy, and it's like, man, I wanna get this done fast. Appraisers aren't as busy, so they're like, can I get out there? Oh my gosh, I got an order today. That's how some colleagues are feeling. <laughs> People are looking in real estate right now, and I see these conversations about, hey, what's your side hustle, right? I, I say, do whatever you want, stay off the pole. That's my advice. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but buyers are poised to gain more power. Sellers will keep adjusting. Uh, prices are poised to continue to decline, okay? Fewer buyers are participating, and we're going to start the year with diminished demand unless something major happens that interrupts the trend. Let's just be realistic about the market that actually exists, okay? Now, here's a cool visual, because I think some people are like, well, what the heck would happen in a declining market in the spring? Like, do we have a spring season, or, or is it just like free ball from here on out? And so I want to give you some insight into this, okay? Cool visual. I've never seen it in our market. I pushed it out this week for the first time, but here's... This is 2005 through 2008, okay? And the dark blue bars are January through June, the first half of the year. And so the market peaks right here, 
And then do you see what happened in 2006? Prices are declining, but what happened to the seasonal market for prices in 2006? Do you see a little bit of an uptick? Yeah, and so, it, um, and then in 2007, prices are definitely going down. What do you see here for prices? A little bit of an uptick and then decline. In 2008, kind of flat and then decline. In the 1990s, prices were declining, they peaked here. And you can see the black bars are, um, you know, uh, excuse me, January through June. And so in 91, a little bit of an uptick, and then market starts to decline. It pretty much declined here. Um, you can see in 93, went a little bit flat, and then declined the rest of the year. And in 94, there was kind of an uptick, and then leveling off. And so I just want to say that we don't see the same thing with prices every spring, but it's not uncommon to see prices go horizontal. Now, if we're in an environment where rates go up dramatically, I mean, we've not seen this before, okay? And so we'll see what happens. But here's the big question, okay? Because prices don't matter so much is volume. Volume for you is where you get your paychecks. Who cares about the prices? You want the volume. What happens to volume? Okay, prices peaked right here, but this graph is volume. And you can see after 2005, for a couple years, do you see what happened in the market? volume disappeared, okay? It kind of feels like that right now, right? Where you're like, oh, we're missing 40% of the market, okay? But do you see in 2006 what happened? There was a seasonal uptick. There were more sales during the first part of the year and less sales during the second half. In 2007, the market was bad. And you could see more sales during the first part of the year, fewer sales. 2008, where prices have gone down a lot, a lot of foreclosures <coughs> kind of in the market, and, there, and so volume started to sort of reemerge. And so it's almost like I would expect for hibernation, if, we're, if we enter a more pronounced seasonal decline, if this continues, expect to sort of hibernate, tighten things up, and then eventually we can see more volume. Okay? But does that make sense? We can expect, I, I think ahead, we probably will see some seasonality. Okay? Prices might be majorly tanking in you know, January, February, but we should start to see more sales. Okay, Good. you guys probably have more people who want to list in the spring. Yes. Um, so this looks very optimistic. So we're looking at a better 2025 and 2026. Well, the historical if, graphs. Like if the market saying. followed that pattern, typically when a market declines, I'll, at my very last slide, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about that. We usually decline for five to six years. Now, I don't think that we're locked into a trend where we have to do that. Okay. Sometimes it's like sharp decline. And we gotta realize that it's not a free fall the whole entire time. It's not like skydiving where you're falling at the same rate. There's gonna be intense decline and then less. Okay, I'll, I'll have a little, I have some cool thoughts about that a little bit later. But here's basically, when you look at Placer County, um, you know, different neighborhoods, volume changes. Um, what I want you to do is to keep an eye on, you know, what's happening in 55 plus communities. Mm -hmm. What's happening in areas where there's acreage. What's happening in, you know, sub suburban places, you know, and try to wrap your mind around where are the fires going, okay? Now, basically, it's down everywhere, and it's almost good, like you see Roseville zip codes and Roseville, it's almost good if you're down 20% in volume. That's like, woo, we're doing good, right? In today's market, it's just the truth. Uh, same thing with Sacramento. Um, you can see like Folsom is only down 18% in volume, uh, Faro 17%. Like there's some pockets of uh, Rio Linda. Go, oh, Rio Linda is crushing it. Um, <laughs> when you can see that, okay, there's something here, and we have to keep watching it. Sometimes when I pull stats for the Meadowview area in South Sacramento, um, there hasn't been that much of a difference. Pollock Pines in El Dorado County, not that much of a difference um, between last year and this year in terms of volume. I bet prices have really changed. Volume hasn't as much. Camino, um, not that many sales, but almost exactly the same. Okay, um, so something to think about. But uh, million dollar homes. Uh, has anyone sold anything above a million lately? Yeah. Hey, get, go after that market. A little bit higher this year compared to last year. Nothing too too crazy. Okay. Has anyone heard though that the million dollar market, the luxury market, is struggling the most? I hear that narrative at least on Twitter. Has anyone heard that? Okay, I want to call fake news for now. The, the trend could change, but let me show you. Let me show you what's uh, been happening locally. Okay, um, oh, too bad we can't see that above. But here's a change in volume from. Um, it basically shows the difference between May and October last year, and May and October this year. And you can see by price range, like look. 
Above 1.5 million, there's about a 6% difference in volume. And it's like the lower you go, like 400 to 500,000, down by 38%. And so what do you notice? Like, do you see how the lower prices have taken a bigger beating with volume? Okay. And so some people are like, it's the top end that's struggling. That's not what's happening in our market. We're seeing the most struggle at price points where people are more sensitive to rates, right? Um, here's a different way to look at it. Um, I'm gonna skip through some of these. But here, let's look at September through November though. Like I said, we don't wanna just look at May to October. And so um, when, we, when we do this, you can see that, okay, some of the upper price ranges, you're starting to see more of an effect, but still, it's the lowest prices that have experienced more of a hit to volume. Does that make sense? So sometimes when we're looking at, at prices in neighborhoods, that can influence what we're, when we're pulling comps, being like, let's be aware that there could be a bigger dip in some ranges. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Um, so a new construction, has anyone got your client into a new home? Okay. There is opportunity ahead. I think I still think some builders need to adjust their prices, need to come down. I've heard of a few. Um, I won't mention one in Rockland though. That um, you know is not budging on prices. <coughs> like, hey, you know, if your buyer wants to cancel, that's fine. Like you can keep up that like strong um, vibe for a little while um, as long as the market lets you. But um, you can see, look, here's new construction purchase contract volume through all these months, and you can see it's really been about half. Um, since April. This comes from North State BIA. Here's the link below. And so this is exactly why builders are emailing you. They're coming to meetings. Um, like I keep saying, builders are sort of like the, the kid who got a boyfriend or girlfriend in seventh grade. They left the friend group and then they break up and then they come back and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm a six year old right now. That's the best. That's exactly what happened. And frankly, that's loan officers. And, and oh, it's the agent who texted me this morning. There's one text in this thread, and let me just read it to you. Um, I won't say his name. Um, but, no, yeah, I won't say his name, John, Johnny J. No. He says, uh, hey, Ryan, it's been a while since we've connected. This is literally the only text message. Answer. I sent you an estimated value for your property, blah, 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 blah. I'd love to help you. Time for coffee? And do you think I'm going to respond to that message? Heck no. no. I'm on that person's drip campaign, and I know it. That person doesn't care about me. So um, I, if I was going to do real estate right now, there's no way in the world I'm going to do business with that person. They, they don't give, give a crap about me. <laughs> anyway. But you really don't know what your own home value is. Let's help you. Right? I know. I know. Confused on how to appraise property. Okay. So builders basically, in this is some insight for today. Between 1977 and uh, 1981, Mortgage origination fell by 40% when rates rose. Annual um, home sales dropped by 36%, and um, I can't remember what that one is. It dropped by 51%. Um, but basically, builders were sending two by fours to the to the Fed and saying, "We need help. We need you to do something about rates." And right now, our building locally has been chopped in half, and so there's going to be a lot of opportunities for buyers. And California style, I'd love to see some two by fours like this. <laughs> so we'll see if they do that. But let's talk about prices. Oh gosh, do you guys want to have this combo? Okay, so let me ask you this. What are prices doing? Are they going up? Are they going down? Are they sideways? Going down. They're going down? Sideways, technically. Sideways? Okay. Sideways. Who thinks that they're going down? I, I do, I do, by the way. Okay, so this is what I want to do, guys. I want us to recognize any lens that we have right now, and I want us to look at the stats. Okay. Now, here was last month. No, don't. You don't want to share this. I'm, I'm going to make. <laughs> <laughs> no, do not. Last month, the median price in the region was up about two percent, and so people were like, "Dude, okay, the market is stabilizing. Everything's everything's okay. We're in a little bit of a cold leaf, right?" To borrow a, a big short quote, and um, and. But then right now, let me show you what's going on. So the median price in 2022 is this top line. It was, was up exponentially. And then last year is this line. And this dotted line is so far October. What do we notice about the median price in October of this year and last year? The market's stabilizing, right? No, no. Prices have definitely gone down, and right now what we're doing is to think about it in a romantic terms, we're flirting with prices from last year, 
Okay, and it's it's what is happening. Okay, what is this number right here? Average price drop. Okay, very close. The median price drop. Um, there's a chair right here if you want. There's uh, the median price drop since May in the Sacramento region. Now look, this does not mean that every single you know neighborhood is down by 75 grand. I gotta tell you though, when I pull comps sometimes, I'm going, oh, there's been a big hit in this neighborhood. Have you seen some big hits? When you're looking at sales in May and June and July and what's actually getting into contract, there's a really, really noticeable difference, okay? So here's um, median price growth in the region. It was at 440,000 at the beginning of 2020 and we shot all the way up to 625. And so there was, Growth by 185,000 in a very short period of time, and in, over the past five months, we've lost 40% of that. Okay, um, we've lost 75,000 in a very, very short period of time. Okay, and so I think sometimes the narrative is that hey, everything's all good and it's stable. That doesn't look stable to me. Okay, um, now here's a different way to look at it. May to October, in different counties, you can see Sac County, Placer County, El Dorado. Take these with a grain of salt because I need another week before making these stats solid, but basically all ships rise and fall with the tide, and what we're seeing is drops by 10 to 12 percent since May for the median. Again, that doesn't mean every neighborhood is down in value by 10 to 12 percent, but sometimes, you know what sellers need? They need to see this. And so there is an agent who reached out to me this week, has a listing somewhere in Placer County, and the seller said no to an offer um, in July, and now they have an offer that's sixty thousand dollars lower. Oh, wow. and, and so you know that's painful, but I've, it's not an isolated incident. But I think that when we consider stats like that, like that kind of lines up with what I'm talking about here. Okay, um, so sellers are basically chasing prices. If if we're looking at the market, that's absolutely what's happening. Now, if you look at the comps and here are all your sales, here are all your pendings, and they're all at the same level. Hey, the market's stable, no problem. We don't want to impose this like it's down by 10% on every single neighborhood. That would be a mistake. Okay, um, but here's Sacramento County, and you can see in October we're actually slightly down, and it's possible over the next week we might go down a few more thousand. And so we're we're officially down. Um, here's Placer County. What do you notice about Placer? It's been flirting with la last year for uh, about three months in a row. Okay. And, um, and so it's stable. And when I show this graph, people are like, it's normalizing. Like, we're just going to go, you know, um, what will need to happen is that prices need to come down to promote affordability, okay? With rates this high, do you know what the best mechanism is for affording the market, eventually, to see prices come down, okay? And watch those parents, by the way, if prices come down enough, who want to buy homes for, you know, their kids to stay in California eventually. Maybe that's just me, you know, because I'm targeting the market. Here's the deal, you can't control the market, but you can control your mindset. This is what you want to be thinking about in coming time. That's the only thing you can control, okay? Um, here's a different way to look at it. Um, this is kind of confusing, we're gonna run out of time, but basically the median price, I'll just say this, it's dropped by about two and a half percent for five months in a row, okay? And so sometimes people are like, well, in a declining market, we drop by 1%. Like, that hasn't been the case here, okay? And so we've seen a much more substantial price drop. Um, when you get the PDF, if you need help with understanding this one, um, I'll walk you through it. Um, but basically, more pronounced price declines is the name of the game. And that's, that's what sellers need to hear. And I think buyers can look on with some optimism to eventually actualize, okay? Uh, let's go to the Jordan meme though, because uh, you know when the housing market changes and the market is hot, narrative no longer works, right? And so it's like, well, what do we say about the market? Some people have built their entire book of business on the market is hot, it's glowing, everything is wonderful, and then when something changes, and we ask, well, what do I say? And so it's time to reorient. Remember that tweet from Aaron Stump. But also, ask this, it's not about prices, it's about lifestyle buyers. It was never about prices in the first place. It's about finding people who have incentive to buy and sell and invest in the market regardless of what prices are doing. Okay, so I'd ask, who has incentive to do that? Um, think about the three Ds, death, disease, and divorce. You know, with people moving for lots of different reasons, okay? Um, you know, where are you go uh, what are you gonna do with your equity is a powerful question for sellers as they watch their equity dwindling. The struggle, of course, is 
well, what do you do for the replacement home? Okay, brainstorm those things though and find opportunities for your clients, okay? Um, oh, and the last thing I say, where do you want to be? Like that, uh, I love that Mike Gopi quote, you know, um, if you think the market's going down, where do you want to write it down? But really, in the broader sense, where does your lifestyle mandate for you to be? Your kids need to get into a certain school district? Great, let's get them in that district. You've really been wanting to live in an outlying area in El Dorado or Placer County? Like, let's make that happen. Okay, there are opportunities in today's market. The car is not parked. Okay, the car is just going, you know, 30 miles per hour or whatever, you know, speed we want to assign to it. Okay, rents are beginning to stabilize. Has anyone heard that? I wouldn't say stabilize for now. Um, and, and here's the United States, they really flattened. Okay, and it's possible that rents could decline ahead if people feel, you know, economic pain. But I've seen that locally in talking with property managers and looking at SAC stats. And so just kind of, you know, be aware of the rental trend, especially as you work with investors, you know. Um, but here's kind of mortgage rates in the background. <laughs> and, uh, and this is what's happening, you know, and then also sellers, you know, just sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, and to be fair, it's hard to listen to the market when there's been really quick change, you know. Um, but it's kind of like you could share those stories with your sellers, like, hey, here's an example of someone that lost, they didn't listen, like, the meat. I would actually use that. The median price has been dropping by two and a half percent. That could slow, that could speed up, but like that's what they need to know. And so if you're overpriced on the market for 30 days, guess what? Not only were you overpriced, but the market also declined while you were on the market. And so it's like, it's that double whammy, okay? Um, but like I always say, my favorite way to talk about the market is like a Hot Pocket taken out of the microwave too early. Okay. Um, does anyone still eat Hot Pockets? Okay. I'm on a diet again, you know, I tend to like go up and go down. Yeah, my kids too, and I'm like, that looks so like fake, you know. But anyway, <laughs> if you put a hot pocket in the microwave, you take it out early. What happens? Some spots are blazing, some spots are lukewarm, um, some spots are cold, and that's exactly what happens in real estate, where the market isn't going to feel the same in every single price range. Okay, and there's going to be some really hot examples. Here's Placer County. Some fresh data for October. Anything that sold in October above this line sold above the original list price. Anything that sold below went below. You can kind of see percentages. Like here's this bro that sold at 25% or Sister Susie sold at you know, 26%. What do you notice here about sales below? Most, would we say most of them are below? Yeah. 73% yeah. yeah. of sales last month sold below the original list price. That's a powerful step to say most of the market is not going above. Okay, but here's what happens. I give a presentation like this, and then someone's like, look, though, this property sold 7% and 8% above. Don't tell me that the market is slowing because the market is crazy hot. And then I just say, look, that's an example of a tree in the midst of the forest. And what we have to recognize is that the whole forest is doing something, but there's going to be different trees throughout the forest and pockets of, like, this property was super aggressive because it's what everyone wants. Nothing comes live in this neighborhood, and, and so it, went, it got way bit up, okay? Is that, you know that perfect property right now with the pool, large lot, um, you know, single story, larger house? People are going to pick up that, okay? Um, so 33.9% of pending contracts over the past two weeks in the region had multiple offers. Okay? It's as fresh as you can get, like fresh, fresh, fresh pending stuff, and so again, the market hasn't stopped, okay, but this is not like 60 to 70 percent like last year, okay? In uh, Sacramento County, that's a little more, remember, lower prices, the market tends to be more competitive, okay? And in Placer County, that's less, 27 percent of properties, you know, and so just a helpful stat to wrap your mind around, okay? Now, housing temperature, real quick, let me ask you guys this, what percentage of homes sells at exactly the list price? Does anyone know? They got agents changing it as you close and drop the price again. So it sure. looks like it's the same. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> games, happening. there's games. Um, I'll say this. The exactly the list price, only 9.4% of sales last month sold at exactly the original list price. This is a killer stat in each listing presentation to say basically to your sellers that 90% of the market is not selling at the list price. It's either going above or below, probably more below. Use this stat to your advantage. Tell your sellers, don't get stuck on the original price, okay? 
Um, here's a few graphs I'm going to kind of whiz through. I'll just say this. This black line is 2022. And look, about 20.6% 20, of sales in October sold above their original list price last month. Okay, like I said, that car is not parked. Okay, about one in five sold above. Now, what are these sales? Oh, well, they're probably priced low or priced right. Um, you know, and so think about it. And when you look, here's another way to look at it. Below the original list price, in the whole region, 70% sold below. So it's that market where you want to share with your sellers that, like, look, this is the dynamic. Expect that you're going to go below. Okay? Now, how long is it taking to sell? Are you guys still with me here? Okay, okay. I got some stuff to share. So look at Sacramento County. Here's our October sales, 36 days. Okay, remember sales that sold in October? They got in a contract in probably September. So this tells us about September. Look at pendings over the past month, 40 days, and actives. And no matter where we look, you see the trend where the market is a little softer in the pendings, and then you have your whole host of stuff here is just sitting. And so it's like one of those things. My motto, if I was going to get a tattoo, it would say, "Be a pending, not an active." Okay? And you've got to figure out how do you become a pending in a market where there's a lot of stuff sitting. Okay? Um, in Clatcher County, 46 days is my projection for November sales. That's how long it will take. But you can look, here's all November's from previous years. Look at la the last two years. This is crazy. 20 days to sell in November. Look what's normal. So it should be taking close to 50 days to sell right now. That's actually normal. Okay? Um, here's Sacramento County, 40 days is my projection for November, and look at the last two years, it's taking twice as long to sell, but at the same time, it was, it was the market was chopped in half here. Here's what normal looks like, okay? Um, I'm going to whiz through some stuff here, but here's pendings and plas here over the past two weeks. And look, 7.1% of properties that got in the contract went the first weekend, okay? So it's like setting expectations that, hey guys, 93% of the market isn't going in the first weekend. And you can kind of look, but during the first 10 days, you know, only 17%. And so, you know, the more you look at stats, it's just going to take longer to sell. But what I'd, I'd recommend, obsess over the pendings and go, hey, if the stuff that's moving is getting into contract quickly, then you got to sell quickly, okay? You don't want to lollygag for 30, 40 days because you're going to be lowering the price more and more in a declining market, okay? So, uh, but the good thing we have a Bay Area seller or buyers who will pay more. So that's the good news in this market, right? No, no. <laughs> Dispel the myth, please, please. Um, okay, here's a great visual to share about price reductions. You can look in Placer, 55.6% of listings have had a reduction in the region. That's about 54%. This is a great stat. There's a lot of the market that's overpriced right now. And you don't want to be part of that posse. You want to be part of the pending group. Okay? Does anyone know what this is? Pendings. Pendings. Yes. <laughs> okay. 49.4% of pendings had a price reduction before getting into contract. On the positive side, the, um, you know this shows that um, price reductions work. It helps get you in the market. Think about it this way though, 50% of pendings didn't need a reduction, obsessed, why not? What was it about those ones? It probably has a lot to do with pricing, okay? Um, now true or false, <coughs> inventory is so low, so we're all good. False. False, yeah. For a while there, we were looking at, and honestly, we're, we're not that high, we're about two and a half months in the region. We got way low during you know, the last couple years. We're, we look historically normal on paper. And so people can be like, hey, we're fine. But here's what I agree with completely. There's um, uh, this guy who works for John Burns Real Estate Consulting, Rick Palacios Jr. says, seems like housing industry is waking up to harsh reality that home prices can fall even if supply doesn't rise. We're still missing 500 listings from normal in our market, but it doesn't, it doesn't even matter, okay? Because rates have been a bigger issue, okay? So the quicksand moment, who has a rate below 3% on your personal residence? Yeah. Do you have less incentive to sell? Yeah, mm -hmm. probably I do too. If we really experience economic pain, that could change. And it, all of a sudden, if people don't have equity, that could change. But still, it's like right now, it's like, man, I, it, it's really hard to move. So we've had fewer pendings. Um, and basically, in 2022, here's the line in black. Here's 2021 in orange and a couple other years in the region. And we really, for 
for October, we were down, depending on the week, somewhere between 40 to 50 percent. Okay. So what does that tell us for November sales volume? It's going to probably be down between 40, 40 to 50 percent. This is a clue into the market. So that's sort of planning ahead for half the market being missing. Okay. Now we could look at the stat from May and be like, it's only 28 percent. Okay. It is technically for May, but we've got to really look at that. Okay. The good news is it just takes one buyer to make this deal work. <laughs> and it turns out you do have to buy Twitter if you promise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, here's, I have a lot of uh, some closing slides. I would just say don't focus on prices too much. That's, I mean, for sellers, yes. That's not the issue. The issue is volume in our market. When the market um, cratered, when it crashed, when it tanked in 2005, here's three different price metrics. By 2006, prices were only down four to six percent, four to six, and the market was beginning to really, really turn. But you know what was happening with volume behind the scenes? Volume was down by 40 plus percent, and so prices were barely down. The bigger story was volume, though. Okay, inventory spiked, and here's the interesting thing: we look and go, inventory has to spike for a market to change, but we're not really seeing that today. And so it just shows that there's not a formula for how a market has to change. Okay. Let me ask you this, and I have a few closing visuals um, to talk about price cycles. Who's going to win the Super Bowl this year? Niners. The Niners. With the most points. <laughs> I know it's not going to be the Raiders, sorry. <laughs> Tell them, Ryan. Any other, any other guesses? It's not a trick question, because I, I don't know who's going to win. Okay, I'm going to have to use, next time I'm going to talk about the Kardashians, or like something <laughs> funny, you guys clearly don't like football. Here's, here's what I'm getting asked. We work on Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody knows whether it's going to be the Niners or the Panthers or the whoever's who's going to win the Super Bowl. Nobody knows, and let's not talk about this, who's going to be you know, president in 2024. Or you know, the basic stuff is like, what's Elon Musk, is he really going to charge $8 for a blue check mark on Twitter? Like all the things that we're talking about, like we don't know how this is going to pan out. And in a sense, we have to concede, we don't know exactly what's ahead in the future. But right now, we're like, the market is really, really changed. So, my last slides here on prices. This is price growth in Placer County in yellow and Sacramento in blue from 1990 onward. What do you know about Placer? It's higher than Sacramento, larger homes, um, that, that's very common. But what, over time in real estate, would you say that prices have gone up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that wasn't a trick question. So here's 1975 through today. The, uh, this is just uh, Sacramento through the Freddie Mac price index. What do you notice over time? Goes up. So in real estate, you win over time. You really won if you bought something in '75, right? <laughs> inflation went up, but it's just yeah. Born. And so, but let me adjust this for inflation, and it looks way different. I would say you still win as you hold real estate, but what do we notice? Markets go up and then down, up, down, up, down, up. And so the most normal thing would be for real estate to go down, because that's what happens. But do you know what happens to our narrative? We, we embrace this narrative that the market is always going up, and then the market says, that's actually not what I always do. Okay, I'm not always happy every day. I have bad days too. That's what real estate does on an emotional level. Okay, so a few quick points. I would say be aware of rhythms. It's normal for prices to go up and down. I would say this though, we're declining, but we're not locked into a trend where we all of a sudden decline for five to six years. That would actually be the most normal thing to see happen. Who knows with you know the Fed sort of working their magic on the market. Um, so we'll get through the Fed's mess. Uh, I would say 2005, what happened here is not the new formula. Okay, and so sometimes people look at 2005, they're like, this is exactly what's gonna happen. Remember though, in the 1990s, prices dipped. We could have got back to 2002 and we could have said, you know what's gonna happen? Prices are gonna decline just like they did here, but then they went up for three more years. And so I always say that market cycles are like children. If you have multiple kids or you know cousins or you know nephews, they're not the same, even though they have similar DNA. Okay, and um, uh, lastly, I'd say you know where do you want to be? That's that's the whole thing. And so I'd say the reality is we're poised to see fewer sales ahead as buyers struggle to afford the market with higher rates. My advice: work harder than ever before. Expect to see fewer deals on your desk. Let's be realistic about that. Okay, cut frivolous expenses, beef up your marketing and service, and focus on the deals that are happening rather than the ones that aren't. You've got to position yourself for. How do you be a part of the market that is happening rather than the part of the market that isn't?
Okay. And so my last but not least, I have some unsolicited advice. Is it okay to just give yes. 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 Okay. Sure. a few quick nuggets? So I'd say, be patient, we need time to see the trend. And boy, are we in the midst of it now. We're like, whoa, this is what's <laughs> happening. Okay. Um, know what normal steps look like so you can spot abnormal. That's what I'm trying to do with my visuals all the time to say, hey, days on market, totally normal. Months of housing supply, really normal. The way that prices are changing, not normal. Okay? Um, build your network and keep feeding your network. Okay? My, my friend, I would say acquaintance really, um, you know, he's trying to you know, make me a part of his network today and I'm, I'm going to push back on that. I will remember this. I, I resent it. He, you know, he left me um, and he's forgotten about me. Don't forsake your first love. Now that sounds so biblical. No, but seriously, you've got to build your network and, and feed your network to sustain your growth. Okay? You will not survive in a, in a market ahead if we get to 50% you know, lower volume. You don't survive without a network that can sustain you. Okay? Strategize for how to succeed during a down market. I highly recommend this. I've done this myself. I might share my letter in a couple weeks before Thanksgiving. Dear downturn. And write yourself a letter and say, here's how I'm going to conquer you. Here's how the, the practical steps I'm going to take to be successful in this business as time approaches. Whatever the market does, it totally collapses, it you know, rebounds, it doesn't matter. How are you going to strategically plan to be successful? That's the only thing that matters. Um, Okay, be a stack sniper instead of a shotgun. Um, when you get this PDF, I recommend not like trying to push it all out on your clients. They don't care. They don't want to hear about it. Okay? Don't be that shotgun that sprays everywhere. Take a few little things and say, you know what? I'm going to make an Instagram reel about concessions. 44% of sales had concessions last month. Or I'm going to make a reel telling sellers that, you know what? 93% of the market doesn't get into contract in Pacha County the first weekend. Or I'm going to push this one little thing out on Facebook. And so you're a sniper. Okay, look at my data. I push out too much stuff. I do. Okay? But I'm doing it so you can take it and repackage it into smaller bites. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and the last few things, take your mental health seriously. Unsubscribe from YouTube channels that are stressing you out. Okay? Um, and if you're obsessing over real estate every single day, guys, if we have the next five to six years for prices to decline, how are your next five to six years going to be? Okay, I'm 46 years old today, and um, happy, birthday. No, happy birthday! I didn't mean literally, but thank you. Uh -huh. and, um, so, um, I'm 46, and if I'm lucky enough to live for 30 more years, I'll endure two more up and down market cycles. Okay, and so that means theoretically, in the next 30 years, there's probably going to be 10 to 12 years where real estate is going down. And so it's like as I look upon that, I have to ask myself, am I only going to be happy? and content and full of joy when the market's up, right? That's a challenging question, and so figure that out. Don't be afraid to change what you say about the market from week to week. Um, obsess over every escrow. Ask every person you meet, why did the seller sell and why did the buyer buy? Everyone in your office for every escrow, get used to that because that'll help you identify who are the buyers? Why are they moving? Is it the dog in the yard? Is it, you know, the kids are gone and we're downsizing? Is it we inherited some money and we're doing something or we really want to be in El Dorado County or whatever it is, you've got to nail that, okay? And last but not least, be generous and authentic. Um, like I'm not trying to rail on my friend. I, I hope he's not watching. Um, sorry, but you, you did it to yourself, bro. Um, but, but we've got to be authentic and be present for people and keep it about relationship. This is a business that's about relationships and it's building for the long haul. In a market like today, what you do is you plant seeds that probably aren't going to come to fruition for a couple of years for a lot of people. Okay? And so you work hard, you push that plow forward, but you realize that you're going to bear that fruit eventually. But keep it focused on relationship. I think so many people are just trying to close the deal over and over again. That doesn't work on me. Maybe I'm an outlier. I just think it's nauseating and gross. I want people, I want to work with people who care about me and, and, and you know, authentically. Okay? Does that make sense? Um, and thank you. back to that slide. Right. Okay. So that was that. Um, guys, I hope that was helpful. Um, that was my spiel. Oh my gosh, that was too much. Oh, my word. <laughs> Ryan for coming out. As always, you are a bountiful abundance of knowledge. Um, a couple of things for house cleaning. One, if you do 
uh, subscribe to his blog. If you go to his blog and you're going to use his material, always credit him and credit the site that you got it from. That's really the only thing he asks.